So I think the, the interesting thing we heard from Prince is the U.S. constantly plays the card of ethnic division. We know this, right? Divide and conquer. Play Shiite against Sunni, Alawite against Druze, uh, Christian against Muslim. Uh, one interesting word that I learned tonight is the fitna. The fitna is the murderous war of religion that takes place between the Sunnis and the Shiites. And we would say a war of religion or a confessional war. And uh, we haven't had that in the West since uh, 1648. But there were people in France who, before the Thirty Years' War, essentially came out and said, we cannot let the society be torn apart. And I guess this is one of the one of the, the, the genius of Cardinal Richelieu, was that Richelieu would say, uh, he said there are two, two conceptions of religion. One is the Spanish one, where the religion serves the Spanish goals at the Spanish Empire. And then he says, then there's the French one, where uh, you can be a Catholic but you don't have to be in favor of Spain. Creature of the Spanish, we need that Catholic state. But I think that's the idea that the U.S. has been hopping so long on this religious tradition being that uh, they've been uh, people are uh, doing the backlash. Michel Aoun, one last thing, Michel Aoun has promoted contact between young Maronite Christians and young Shiites, and that seems to reach the gap there remarkably. So there are genetic tendencies in Lebanon. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Godley reporting tonight from Beirut, Lebanon. So let's sum up what we've what we've understood so far about the crisis in Syria. The lessons we've drawn from this fact-finding tour, which includes the city of Homs, a full-day seminar in the city of Banyas near Tartus on the Mediterranean, where that the Russian naval base is located and then a visit to the Damascus Military Hospital, plus uh, a lot of time spent moving around on the roads in, in uh, Syria, and then coming now into Lebanon, right, crossing the, uh, the Syrian-Lebanese frontier. Here, I think, are the findings, once again, in summary. There is no mass insurrection in Syria. It just isn't there. There is no mass political movement against President Assad or the Ba'ath Party regime. There is no civil war. And I myself, having been in Libya, I guess I know what a civil war in a modern Arab country looks like. And in this case, you just don't find it. Uh, the presence, in fact, of the military in uh, everyday life is, is minimal. Uh, there are basically no checkpoints. The international airport, as I said before, the international airport is working fine. There are basically no checkpoints. <laughs> All the time we were driving around on the roads, back and forth from Homs to Damascus and so forth, uh, I think I saw one tank transporter, and the most uh, troop, uh, co the one convoy we saw was about 20 trucks on the road from uh, from Syria into Lebanon, right, a little bit north of, uh, of the level of Beirut. So there's no mass killing of civilians by uh, Syrians, uh, if anything, uh, by the Syrian army. There's no mass killing of civilians by the Syrian army. If anything, there is killing of the Syrian army by terrorists, and we're going to try to pin that down in just a minute. Uh, there is no demand by the masses of Syria to oust the Assad government. Rather, the main demand of the, of the population of Syria is that the regime should do more, that they should send more army units into places like Homs, that they should have a quicker, rapid response to this uh, situation, and that, therefore, they need to have a firmer line. In other words, the popular sentiment demands a crackdown. It is the exact opposite of what you've been told. So to state that again, remember, what you've heard from Al Jazeera, France 24, the BBC, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, and just about everybody else, the Associated Press, don't forget them, is simply a tissue of lies. And again, what I found there is death squads. 
death squads on the Latin American model, the kinds of things that John Negro Ponte created in places like Argentina or Central America back uh, in previous decades. The difference, once again, in the death squads in Syria is that whereas the death squads in Latin America or Central America were targeting specific groups, be they communists or trade unionists or uh, other specific political parties or political tendencies, in this case you're dealing with blind terrorism. You're simply dealing with random killing, uh, and a killing as an end in itself. And all groups are equally susceptible to being attacked. You can be men, women, children. We've seen it all. You can be uh, a Shiite. You can be a Sunni Muslim. You can be a Druze. You can be a, uh, an Alawite. You can be any kind of Christian. You can be a Greek Orthodox, a Greek Catholic, a Syrian Catholic. Uh, you can be a Melkite. Uh, you are likely to be shot at by one of the death squads. And their, their typical way of operating is with snipers on the roofs of buildings. They also do kidnapping. The kidnapping seems to have gone down as the uh, this crisis has evolved. But uh, the, the big thing that is uh, is going on is the sniper shootings and ambushes. So this, I think, is, is precisely the opposite of what you heard Um uh, Previously, Now, let me just go back and, and talk about some of these case studies that we did. The city of Homs, if you watch those uh, awful uh, Anglo-American media that I mentioned before, the city of Homs is supposed to be the epicenter of this entire uh, crisis. And it's in particular the neighborhood of Zahra, Z-A-H-R-A, approximately transliterated into the Roman alphabet. So here's a place, we were there on Tuesday, and the group that I was with uh, promoted with the help of uh, some Christian churches, Oriental Christian churches here in, uh, in Syria and, and in, indeed in Lebanon. Uh, we were the first foreign journalists into Homs, so this is already interesting in itself. It means that any report you've heard from Homs that purported to be an eyewitness account from Speed Level was a lie. Uh, and it means that, that the morning I went to Homs, in a hotel in Damascus, I turned on the BBC, and they showed something, some bunch of people in the street. You couldn't tell much about it. And then they showed some flames coming out of a window, and they said, this shows what's happening in Homs. Well, they lie. Uh, I was asked today at a press conference, what's your advice for the Western media? Two words, stop lying. That would be a start. 